This is the solution to quiz one. So the first exercise says, find the equation of the tangent line to this f at x is 3. So to make a sketch, the plot of f is a parabola that opens up. So it's a parabola that opens up. at x is 2, no, at x is 3, there is a point, and a tangent line attached at that point. And the request is to find the equation of the of this tangent line. So in order to find the equation of the tangent line, we'll use the point slope form of a line, which is to say that if you know that point x1, y1 is on the line, and you know that the line in question has slope m, then the equation for the line is y minus y1 is m x minus x1. So what this exercise is, it is a request for you to find two things. A point that is on the line and the slope of the line. So as for the point, we know that the, the place of concern is at x is 3. So that means that x1 is 3. And y1 will be f evaluated at x1 which is to say that y1 is f evaluated at 3. So plugging in 3 here, <coughs> that would be 2 multiplied by 3 squared, so that's 2 multiplied by 9, minus 3 plus 12. So y1 is 18 plus 12 is 30, minus 3 is 27. So the point x1, y1 is 3, 27. So we can add that to our picture up here. This is 27. <clears throat> the slope of the tangent line, the fundamental idea that's being <clears throat> that's being tested here is your con is your understanding of the connection between slope of tangent line and derivative. The slope m will be the derivative of f evaluated at x1. So in order to evaluate this, we'll need to find the derivative. So the derivative of f is 4x minus 1. <clears throat> and m slope we're looking for is what we get when we plug in 3. So m is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 1 is 11. So as a result, 
<coughs> the equation of the tangent line, y minus y1 equal mx minus x1, that would be y minus 27 is equal 11 x minus 3. And then simplifying a little bit, y minus 27 is 11x minus 33. And then add 27 to both sides. So y is 11x minus 6. And that's the answer to number 1. Number two, compute the following limits. <clears throat> OK, so then in part A, this is the limit as x goes to 4. It's clear that the denominator is 0. It's not clear if the numerator is 0. If the numerator is 0, then this limit is indeterminate, and we can do further work. If the numerator is non-zero at 4, then the limit doesn't exist. So we need to evaluate the numerator. And we're going to evaluate the numerator with Horner's scheme because Horner's scheme not only evaluates a polynomial, but in the event that the polynomial evaluates to 0, it also factors the polynomial. So 4. And then the coefficients are 1, 3, negative 18, negative 40. <clears throat> so 1, and then multiply by 4 is 4, add is 7, multiply by 4 is 28, add is 10, <clears throat> multiply by 4 is 40, and we get 0. So this zero is so hap is makes us so happy that I'll make it a smiley face because that's telling us <clears throat> that that's telling us that x cubed plus three x squared minus eighteen x minus forty is known to factor as x minus 4 is one of the factors because evaluation at 4 was 0. That makes this one of the factors. And the other factor is taken from these coefficients. <clears throat> that would be x squared plus 7x plus 10. As a result, that means that the limit we were evaluating can be expressed as the limit as x goes to 4 in the numerator x minus 4 multiplied by x squared plus 7x plus 10 divide by x minus 4. And now that we have performed this work, it's clear why the limit is indeterminate, because we have these factors of x minus 4 <coughs> in the numerator and also in the denominator. Because this is a limit, we can cancel those factors. The cancellation is x squared plus 7x plus 10. And this is no longer indeterminate, so we can just evaluate the polynomial. That would be 16 plus 7 times 4 is 28 plus 10, <clears throat> which is 26 plus 28 would be 46 plus 8 would be 54. In part B, we have a limit at infinity. <clears throat> so in lecture, we wrote the 
silly Bobo Botan eats DC for this particular case. So from lecture, we said that you could just just use that trick. So x cubed is the highest power in the numerator, and it is also the highest power in the denominator. So that means that the limit exists and is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the limit is 2 over 4, which is a half. <clears throat> Now, some of you don't care for this method. I, I don't care for this method. I think it's too um, opaque what's actually occurring. So I'll show you how to solve this uh, analytically without resorting to some unclear method. So this is the limit of a rational function what you can do is factor out the largest power of x which appears in the denominator. So the largest power of x that appears in the denominator is x cubed. And I'll factor that out of the numerator and also the denominator. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity. Of So in the numerator I'm factoring out x cubed. So if I factor x cubed out of that term, that would be 2. And then if I factor x cubed out of this, that would be minus 5 over x. And then minus 9 over x squared. And then minus 7 over x cubed. So that's the factorization of the numerator, because if you were to multiply x cubed back in, distribute it through, all of these x's would cancel and you'd get that numerator. Doing the same thing in the denominator, factor out x cubed, that would be 5 over x plus 4 plus 2 over x squared Uh, plus 3 over x cubed. And then this x cubed and that x cubed cancel because we're going to infinity. <clears throat> so they cancel and then we can evaluate each one of these. So first cancel them so the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 minus 5 over x minus 9 over x squared uh, minus 7 over x cubed in the numerator and in the denominator 5 over x minus 4, no, plus 4 uh, plus 2 over x squared and then plus 3 over x cubed. And so now, as x gets big, all of these terms with x is in the denominator are going to go to 0. So this one to 0, to 0, to 0, to 0, to 0, to 0. And the only ones that don't go to 0 are the ones without x is in the denominator, so this would be 2 minus 0 minus 0 minus 0 divided by 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 0, which is 2 over 4, which is exactly what Mr. Bobo Botton said. Okay. <clears throat> So now this is a one-sided limit in part C. It's one-sided because it says the limit as x goes to 3 from the left. That's the meaning of the negative superscript. 
So you can observe that the denominator is 0 at the limit point, and the numerator is non-zero. So this is non-zero over 0. So we're going to get some kind of infinity. We're going to get either positive infinity or negative infinity. So what we have to do is carefully analyze which one we're going to get. So we're going to perform the following change of variables. We're going to write that x is 3 plus h, and h is going to go to 0 from the left. So the 3, the reason for this 3 comes from this 3. So that will always be the same. And this minus becomes this minus. So what this change of variable does is it splits where we're going to 3 and how we're getting there from the left into two separate pieces so that we can handle them separately. <clears throat> so when we do that, this is now the limit as h goes to 0 from the left. And everywhere we see x, we're going to replace it with 3 plus h. So that would be 3 plus h minus 5, and then 3 plus h plus 1, divided by 3 plus h minus 3. And then simplifying, this is the limit as h goes to 0 from the left. So that would be h. And then 3 minus 5 is negative 2, so minus 2. This one would be h. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. And then 3 minus 3 is 0. And here we have h. <coughs> So now, at the limit point, we have two things. At h is 0, we have that the limit is taking the form negative 2 multiplied by 4 divided by 0. So it's not equal to this. So I'm writing this in quotation marks so that you know that it's not equal to this. This is just the form it takes. But the fact that we're getting this on a one-sided limit is telling us that the answer is either going to be negative infinity or positive infinity. It's going to be one of those two, but we can't figure out what it is from this alone. So now <clears throat> we're going to do a sign analysis. So negative 2 is negative. And 4 is positive. So those are easy. So now 0, <clears throat> under normal circumstances, does not have a sign. It does, it's neither negative nor positive. But this 0 is a consequence of this h right here. And this h is going to 0 from the left. That means that we always know the SIGN of h. Because h is going to 0 from the left, that means that its SIGN is negative. So the overall SIGN of this, of this expression, because there's an even number of negatives, is positive. And that allows us to determine that it must be the positive infinite. <clears throat> so the answer is positive infinite. <clears throat> and finally, <clears throat> question three. <clears throat> We're given f is a degree four polynomial. It says create a slope chart, find and classify all local extrema. <clears throat> so the first step in the construction of a slope chart is to find the natural domain.
Because f is a polynomial, the natural domain is all reals. The second step is to find the critical numbers. which is to say where the derivative is 0 or undefined. <clears throat> so let's find the derivative. The derivative is 4x to 3 minus 16x. <clears throat> and this could stand some simplifying, so I'll do that. I can see that 4 and x are common. So I'll factor out 4x and obtain x squared minus 4. And then now I can see that I could factor it even further and obtain 4x multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. So we computed a derivative, so besides simplifying it, the first thing we need to check is was there a change in the domain? Because if there was a change in the domain, that would mean we found a non-smooth critical point. However, there is no change because f and its derivative are polynomials which are defined everywhere. So are there any stationary points? which is to say, is there anywhere that the derivative is 0? Well, because we went through the work of factoring it, it's clear that this occurs exactly at 0, negative 2, and positive 2. So those are the stationary points. <clears throat> so now we're going to make the chart. We found three places, so we found negative 2, 0, and 2. So now in between, in, in, in each region we need to select a test point, so how about negative 3 for this one, negative 1 for this one, 1 for this one, and 3 for that one. So now we're going to take these test points and we're going to evaluate them for for SIGN in this factored expression for the first derivative. So at negative 3, 4x is negative. x plus 2 is negative. And x minus 2 is negative. At negative 1, 4x is negative. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive. And negative 1 minus 2 is negative. At 1, 4x is positive, x plus 2 is positive, and x minus 2 is negative. And at 3, 4x is positive, x plus 2 is positive, and x minus 2 is positive. So now we have the sign patterns in each region. The overall sign in the leftmost region is negative, so that means negative slope. The overall sign in this region is positive, that means positive slope. The overall sign in the third region is negative, so that means negative slope. And the overall sign in the rightmost region is positive, so that means positive slope. So this is the answer to part A. <clears throat> and then the answer to part B is just interpreting this chart. 
Uh, as for the local extrema, we can see that there are some local mins. So local minima occur at negative two and two. And local max occurs at zero. So this is a purely analytic way to understand the exercise. But I'd like to remind you that it is good to know the shapes of such polynomials. So this is a quartic with a positive leading coefficient, which means that it must open up. So quartics, generally speaking, are going to look like the quartics that open up, generally speaking, are going to look like either this with no turning point or possibly like this with three turning points. And in the case <coughs> of the one that we have, it is symmetric and it will look like this. So as you can see, here are turning points. <laughs> and you can observe from the picture, the slope chart is down, up, down, up, which is in agreement with our analytic uh, understanding.